Uh, CD Roman C definitely it's not, I don't think that's in the interferon loop. This is not the I interferon stimulated gene. CD 11 C is nowhere an interferon stimulated gene. So but we look at CD 11 C versus ROT for the yeah, DN2. That's for DN2. Those right. are the two, right? So, so, so CD 11 C is in, is at least some somewhere in the loop. It, it's, uh, yeah, so everybody think that's a, uh, that's a key marker for uh, for the DN2 B cell. On the other hand, CD1C, they consider that's more like a B cell activation marker. So maybe, maybe I'm just guessing, maybe B cell receptor is the one doing it, or I don't know, maybe TR7, but I, I, I am guessing more BCR than TLR. Can I ask one thing real quick? Is it TBET positive, CD11C positive, BN2? Right. What's the other thing? CD11C and what's IG? There is the CD21. CD21 right. negative, CD23 negative, and FCRL3, FCRL5 positive. And there's another gene, ZEB2. Those are the the key uh, DN2 marker genes. And, oh, but then wait, wait, in, in the- different, I'm different things though. Ming may not uh, know about your your data. You know, these FCR, you essentially mentioned FCRL3 and 5, or I think- Right, you, yeah, I, I can send Ming my data. Right, right I can send, these are, yeah. These are so the, the right, because a few critical genes that are in the loop. So yeah, but uh, a lot of them are in the ferron type one stimulated genes, like uh, even IR7, IFI6, um, MX1, a lot of genes on the interferon the pathway, they are, but the funny thing is CD11C is not one of them, it's a, but, but they use that as a marker. So I have to, but uh, some people think CD11C is just a B cell activation marker. So it's not because of interferon stimulation. Those are just activated B cell. Get the Can I just spot. ask you one real other quick thing? CD11C is ROT. It's an adhesion molecule of which one? Or ROT? Oh, I forgot. Yeah. I'm just wondering if it's an activation marker. Maybe a relocalization marker. It's upregulated and it tells B cells where to go. Is that right? It's a, it's uh, maybe a, not a, a adhesion, I would guess, but I, I cannot say it for sure. I mean, but, but what we, Jimmy, what's Wei Chen saying is CD11C might, might not be the best gene. However, there are genes that we know. No, it's a good gene because that's a, that's a, that's a DN2 marker gene. So that definitely that's a good gene to look at. But on the other hand, even not working is a good thing. That says that this is very interferon specific signaling that you, you're inducing. And so CD11C is not, which it's never been. Nobody ever says CD11C is an interferon stimulated gene. It is not. So I, I, I think, uh, I think uh, uh, here in this, in this in vitro system, cell system, um, we didn't see Based on this right hand pillar, we didn't see CD eleven C difference. However, you know, maybe I, I just say that maybe this is a, 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 this a, 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 uh, this gene expression is pretty low, the CD value is higher. And I think it could be that in the other system uh, with uh, type one in the barrel, maybe other uh, side kind of some reagent you know, can uh, work together with type one in the barrel to. Uh, Enhance the expression of CD1C. Just here, we don't have this such kind of reg uh, reagent. So we just we just keep in mind. Maybe I think some signaling together with the type one interferon maybe also affect the CD1C expression. Just in our system, this in vitro system, we don't have this signaling. Hmm. I think, you know, I, I was just thinking. So I'm looking at a review, it's a few years old, but we're talking about CD11, C, B, atypical B cells. And uh, it, it said, you know, and, and TBET positive, CD11, C positive B cells. 
the role of these B cells in health and disease is unclear. Several studies suggest B cells do not respond to BCR engagement. Others report C them C is like or positive, require multiple activation signals, including activation through TLRs. In any event, the thing I was thinking of is maybe, maybe it's not high because you know it's you didn't signal through BCR. Now, whether that's critical or not, there's some debate. I'll send if this this little review about CD11 C positive B cells. I mean, it's um, you know, you stimulated it once, but that RNA may be down, and you didn't stimulate it again with IgM the second time. So maybe that's that has something to do with why CD11C at the RNA level. Not that this right. matters. So yeah, I, I guess I hate to ask Chummy to keep changing the protocol. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just I'm just trying to say. I'm, no, I'm, um, yeah, no, I'm thinking because. Uh, in the past, we don't want a second stimulation with anti mu again. The reason is because we're do using the the flow cytometry to use. Then we get on the IgD positive cell to to define double negative. So if your second dose, you have uh, somebody's trying to join me. Oh, oh here, yeah. So yeah. There's, there's a reason, that was the reason why the second dose we did not stimulate with anti mu because the anti mu, once you give anti mu, the B cell receptor get down regulated or get neutralized. You don't see, so you, you cannot get on the double negative B cell anymore. So that's the one critical reason why anti mu is not included in the second stimulation. However, if the goal is to do the real time PCR, right. that you're not, you don't really need to gate on any cell in this case. So maybe you, we can include anti mu. But uh, the problem with that is, tell me, worked out a protocol that worked well. If you change that, I don't know if that changed the entire result again. So. No, I don't think we have to. I don't want to go backwards. Mm. Let's just go with what we have. Mm. We, I'm just questioning why CD11C isn't is all of a sudden not important. Okay, but 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 else, that's a very good result, Ming. I like it. I think we have something there. What yeah. else do you have there? So maybe I will send the the manuscript we're working on now, and there, and then I will list a few genes if you don't mind. Just try a few more interferon genes uh, with the real time and see what happened. Yeah, okay, great. But, you know, if the goal is to get a single cell experiment done, I think, I think we should work towards that rather than do more real time PCR. Right, the real goal is to get single cell. Get right. single cell. And I, think, right. I think, I mean, you know, we don't know. So I would just, yeah, you show me more data, but I just, Say let's go with what you got, the eighteen hour, you know, data, the eighteen hour time point. T bed is high, IL four receptors down regulated. Let's let's just do it. Mm. Oh, I guess maybe CS model for you. I just make the logic. Yeah. Can you see clearly now? Yeah, I can. Yeah. So okay. So this experiment, because I think about the paper. So uh, in the uh, in the uh, mirroring B cells that we're using is R A four A four A, but in human we use the CL two six four. The difference, the signal is one is a human is a to like a receptor seven specific to like a receptor seven signal, but for R A four A it's a uh, like receptor seven and A, so is that difference? I just wonder about that review. We're pressing our data. <clears throat> so, uh, so I did the experiment using human B cells. Uh, some from mine, some from Dr. Xu. Um, in this, what do you mean that's my cell? Sorry, this is mine. This is my not yours. Your data, I can't get the time to finish the analysis. I see. I can't also, wait I, to see. I yeah. also worked on, uh, on a spleen business, human oh, All right. It's human, right? Human. Yeah. yeah. I haven't got time to finish that. Uh -huh.
So here is the my uh, my blood results. I see. Uh, so in this uh, uh, circuit system, we we use uh, uh, RF4A, uh, you know, um, to simulate uh, the results. So here is the double negative population. Okay. So the top one is G1 group one without a uh, without a uh, cytokine. The second uh, second row is with IF4. Hmm. Now, can we, I can't see the x and y axis on here very well. Uh, I see there's a okay, smaller. Okay, let me. Oh, okay, let me make a bigger. Does it say it? Again, x is IGD, y is CD27. Yeah, because it actually does, it won't help to blow up the axis because it does okay. the floor. Yes, okay. okay. Oh, I see. So it's some CD27 PE. Yeah, here, uh, yeah, PE is IGD and uh, uh, PV6050 is CD27. Right, so so the- um, This is double negative population. Right, CD27, let me just write this down. CD27 is a Y axis, but the thing is, is why does it say CD27 PE it's IGD. It's IGD. Right. So the y axis, the y axis is IGD. No, is y, y is CD27. X is IGD. Oh, PE IGD. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Right. So y is CD27. X is IGD. Hmm. Okay. So now, so, uh, so this is just like the typical. Double negative. Does this, which does this look about? Does this look right to you? Well, I so thought it's is. quite interesting, actually. Is this is after culture, right? Or no? Right. So you triplicate. These are the same cell. You just did it three different. So why there are three? Triplicate. Triplicate. Yeah. So you know, there's a lot of. Here's what I see here. Twenty-seven positive is memory, say. IGD positive is naive. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand the kind of semi, you know, this this distribution coming out of the middle. It, you know, I mean, like there's a lot of double negatives. Are they down? You know, they down That's the interferon with the interferon, right? The third, the third <laughs> rows are in, the, in including interferon stimulation. Yeah. Right. The so second saying, row is IO four. Right, but it, I mean, do you know it does? Should it look like this because it's it looks like a beautiful plot? But is this the way, the way we we think it should look? I I am happy with this actually, right. and you, especially now, not just that the IGD is a very rich population in IL four stimulated. So you see that the it's a big lump there with yeah. the IL four, whereas in the ferron that definitely the naive B cell I'm looking at. So the naive B cell is, is much, much diminished. So what about the force group? With IO4. <laughs> it didn't help. Um, I think here, I guess, uh, from this data, I think uh, RF4A, this called like a receptor signaling code strand. Even mm -hmm. uh, I just using you know uh you know CR two six four I use two microgram here I just use five hundred nanogram. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me talk. Uh, let me make, make sure what what what's the condition I used. Here. And so this is the same culture conditions, but of course you use anti-human IgE. Yeah, but but the thing is, can you go back to the oh, facts? You know, one micron, here is the condition set. Yeah, but can you go back to the facts data? Yes, yes, a facts data. So yeah, so th this one, so the double negative here is not low, it's, it's lower with IL-4, right? Yeah, yes. However, so the naive- If we use true, I think it's good. So uh, if this is true, I will mm -hmm. have a higher, you know, desire to uh, use IF4 in real injection. Previously, I just wonder about IF4 can work or not. 
I think it will. Okay, okay. Let, let me finish because this data, in fact, is quite interesting because you say, okay, I'm disappointed that IL-4 with interferon did not enhance the naive because you look at the naive, that's such a skimpy little population, right? The fourth row. But the double negative is not much lower. Uh, it, it's, it's not higher. It's actually lower compared to the interferon only group. So what's being enhanced? What's being that's enhanced is the memory B cell. Right. So in fact, that's what we like to see too. Because we think that here you show it, in the pharaoh actually in increased the double negative very specifically. But uh, with IL-4, uh, it actually skewed the population to the memory subset. In fact, you, you noticed that too. And uh, of course I noticed that too. So it, it's really saying what we are saying. We thought that's quite interesting, the two linear model. Right. Right, so I am more conventional memory, right? Versus a typical memory. Right, so one, one is skewing towards the, the follicular oriented, germinal center oriented. Of course, you think, of course, that makes sense. I am for doing that, right? And everybody think that's the case. So it's it, sh it's, it pushed the cell to become the, uh, the classical memory B cell pathway, whereas type one in the pheromone, that's not what it does it actually uh, skews the B cell to develop into the double negative B cell. So. I think here uh, type, of, uh, type one in the film better. This is, uh, you know, this third kind, you know, could it be, you know, here signaling too strong. Signaling too strong? Yeah, it's uh, I for this, uh, uh, this dose is not enough to reduce them. You mean, no, I think it's a good, good data. I, I kind of think it's a good yeah, data. Like a, like a, even we, if we without the type one interferon, okay, we can see IFO can reduce mm. our air to like a result of uh, seven air induced double negative. I think, uh, you know, to like a receptor where induced double negative differentiation, I think. Yeah, but interferon enhanced it further, yeah. right? Enhanced it, not right. Further. Because here um, is, here no, is, we know, we know. So, so to to lead to double negative, I don't think interferon alone is sufficient. They probably need the B cell receptor signaling <laughs> TLR, which is exactly why you're doing. But I think, you, but I think right. what we can say, maybe the most interesting thing <clears throat> is the effect of IL four. You know, that's how we started actually, mm. and it does appear that it, I mean, if we just jump ahead, it promotes development of conventional memory versus atypical memory or double negatives. So that's that's quite good. I like the way the conventional memory, the IgD positive shrivels up. It means they're being differentiated to me. I think this is a good, I think this is very good data. You know, we could push it. Somebody may argue, but we could write a paper out of this one too. And I'm not finished, I will ask you double negative two. Okay. Can I answer those? And, and of course, is, if you need more blood, we can donate more to you. I don't mind. I'm willing to do so. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. If what we, is the uh, stimulus uh, uh, for this? What, yeah. are this what, are, what did you culture with? Because I think it might be a little different than the mouse. Yeah, I'll show my slide. But what's the culture conditions for the human? Oh, the human culture uh, is here. So uh, the only difference replaced is uh, uh, RF4A replaced. Uh, previously, we used the CR264, other the same. I see. So this, but I'm looking here. Uh, IL21 is here now. This is my uh, I previously, you know, working condition. Yeah. So this is this is the Anaki protocol. Is that right, Wei Chen? Yeah, that's the Anaki, but he did not add in the Ferron beta. So we, we include it in from beta. And of oh. course, this, this uh, of course, this is all human now, right? Human, anti IgG, human IL2. Is that right? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Five, In a way, we don't mind you do both mouse and human single cell. 
because it, it looks really promising. Uh, you know, I was going to say the same thing. Mm. But look, it's look, yeah. just we want to do single cell, put the mouse through, put the human through. If they both work, then it's wonderful. Maybe make two papers. If mm -hmm. if they one of them works really well, then we'll use that one. Human is more important. I don't think I mean, we are. We could put together in one in one paper, but that'll be a pretty big paper. So mm -hmm. because the single cell data gets voluminous. So I well, have it's something so promising. We want you to do right. single cell. We want we want Joe down there who's doing single cell right now. We want him to have your sample. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Look at Joe working hard down there. Okay, in the Taiwan Nature Tour, it's the CD, uh, CD 2119, Tibet population. But, but what did you say, Joe? I work on the barbecue patient. <laughs> oh, wow. That's good. Oh, I see. The barbecue single cell. Yeah. I see. So, uh, the double negative tool is similar, quite similar as the uh, double negative. Uh, so the group one with subsequent is 27. So next time, I guess maybe we need to reduce the RRFA. It's too strong. It's this. I, I, I don't know, like this uh, higher population here. But, I, you know, with I4, it's reduced quite a bit. And no, I'm here, not sure. What's, what does this look like? I don't, I'm not sure what's going on here. Yeah, I'm not sure either. So, oh, okay. So uh, this is a double negative two based on the CD21 and the Tibet. Oh, I see. CD21 Tibet now. Okay. It's not okay. double negative two. Yeah. It's, in a way, it is, right? So what is it? So what is the axis again? Okay. Double negative two. I guess here it's true. So it's why it's CD21 axis Tibet. Okay, I'm going to add it too. And and of course, we yes. run the we so run the twenty one Tibet positive CD21 negative. Right. Yeah. So very very exciting is I four, you know, reduce uh, dramatically. And the interferon increased mm. four yeah, times. And also with I4 reduced. That's very that promising. I, I said just I'm not sure here is, mm -hmm. uh, is promising. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's very promising. It's kind of like you're ready, right? Now whose cells are these? Are they they're a normal person, right? This is Chengming, right? This is your own so cell. This is my cells. Mm. I, I haven't got to finish the analysis. I, I can. So I, you did the same thing with my cell and the spleen cells. Yes, 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 same. I wanted to see if people can get a similar better. Yeah. Okay. In fact, the spleen. I look at it. The surface marker. That spleen looks really funny. It has a lot of IgM. So IgA, so it doesn't have much switched B cell. It's uh, like 50% IgM only, 50% is IgM positive, IgM positive B cell. So it may not have a lot of double negative cell. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Mm. And also I found that, uh, you know, after, I don't know, maybe some processing problem because this is the same host, this is the uh, after stimulation, I saw more data cells. After mm, yeah. Okay. So next uh, is about uh, in vivo data. Okay. Before you do that, can I ask one thing? Maybe maybe the in vivo data. What do you want to do for single? Let's just discuss the single cell. Why are you looking at the human data? What should we do the single cell analysis on? What population? Or should we do it on all the cells? Or do we want to label, you know, with, you yeah. know, this, you know it's, the, a, it's a very good question. Basically, you know, um, I would like, we need to do some, you know, population, cell population. Also, we need to analyze the total of these cells. Yeah, total, I was thinking of if we could do the 
site seek thing or whatever the surface thing, like putting CD21 in. Uh, we can't do, of course, an intracellular stain, but CD21, CD27, IGD. You know, we did it. I don't know if we ever got, you know what I mean? So you get the surface markers on the B cell, and then you can sub you can subdivide when you look at the single cell. So, you know, what you're saying, what I'm saying, Cheng Ming, is you can, you can do both. You can subset once you get your cells into the into a population of, of double negative, you know, and pull those genes out. Or you can look at the, all, everything. But if you look at everything, you know, it's going to be what well, it's it's going to be less clear because well, you know, it's going to be less clear the pathways because you know you're going to have nor only twenty percent of the cells or whatever are going to be skewed. So I'm not sure how to do that. On the other hand, if you just look at the abnormal ones, you know, they'll be, they, they will have the expected genes. So we're looking maybe at the abnormal ones and the effect of IL-4 and how that diminishes it, that pathway. I mean, I think that's one of the things we want to do is how does, you know, because we know it, it, people would believe interferon might enhance this DN development, but IL-4 inhibiting it is what we really want to show. So what would we do with, to get that, to make that clear? Yeah, yes, I agree. What do, what do you think? I guess, I guess, I guess you know, um, for, for the molecular mechanism, we, we need to work on a total BCS, and then it's for higher yeah. power. I, I would say our goal should, should let it work. Priority is, is to get the assay to work, Adding those site seek anybody is good, but I worry with those we might screw up something at least to really just screw up the experiment, the assay. Even just get a total B cell is is gonna give us a lot of good data. Yeah. Well, I agree. So, I think that's what yeah. I was gonna, that's what I was gonna mm. say. Probably just total, mm. and just we'll 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 see. It, it's complicated enough. So many samples charming got to handle and then do the staining. And then during the staining, you're going to lose a lot of good cells. And so uh, I, I would rather not taking that kind of risk, at least for the first trial. Let's just get it to work. So what's the first trial? Is it this? Just the simulation condition and then just uh, the sample, just use them for the single so cell, yeah. Culture conditions. Now, yeah. you know, you know uh, we, I guess uh, maybe we need to change something. You know, after this uh, in view data, maybe we're just uh, using uh, uh, for, for mu uh, murine B cells. Maybe just isolate the B cells from this spleen, from, from this mouse. We don't need to, uh, you know, do a in vivo uh, stimulation. I, I see. see. Yeah. Oh, so I see. so you, you got a promising in vivo data too? Yeah, yes. I see. All right, let's see. Yeah. Well, that, that would be powerful. Yeah. yeah. That is powerful because uh, it's from in vivo. Yeah. Know. And here, you know, uh, okay. First, I show the double natural population. The mm -hmm. up is the, the up is the B6, the middle is B2, mm -hmm. and the, the the bottom is knockout. Mm. Here is a, here a mouse just uh, injection with PVS. Mm. Okay. So the double natural population is pretty low. Uh, mm. Yeah, I think no difference. Yeah, no. This, this is not right. This mouse is sick, so I need to get rid mm. of the mouse. Mm. But uh, uh, this is uh, one week before I sacrifice the mice. Mm. Okay. Now, Jimmy, I'm having the same trouble. What is the X and Y axis here? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, X is uh, IGD. So it's CD27 IGD. IGD. Y is uh, APC CD27. Oh, okay. So it's just. How old are the mice, Jimmy? Oh, I need a. Uh, I need to, uh, you know, check. So I, I round, I guess, uh, five to six my, my uh, Yeah. Okay. Now wait, wait. Why, why? If the, if the Y is CD twenty seven, is that right? 
Why is CD27? It's always CD27 versus IgD. All right. Where is it? Why are there no memory B cells? Yeah, that's the thing with mice. Always, yeah, we right. always you uh, your mouse, you know, B cells always like this. Very very low population. I don't know. Is that right? But I mean, it's not just low. It's, it's yeah. right. It's kind of like that. So maybe what about a young I mean it does work, right? Everything is working because you know CD oh. like CD27 works because it works in vitro. Right. So, so um you remember in the vitro you have these huge populations. That's mm -hmm. right. And all of a sudden they're different. Right. CD27 population. So okay, here you, you do you have another question? I just kept moving. So uh, here is a uh, with uh, our air for air simulation. Okay, you see after this uh, air for air, this double net double net population increase. So I just I said before, this signaling is pretty pretty important for double negative or in touch. And that's the B six on top, right? And B X C two below. B six. Get you two and a knockout. I can't see the knockout. Can you make, bring it up a little more? I didn't Smaller. see it. Smaller? Okay. Can you see? Oh, yeah, that's very good data. It's really good. And this is just our 848, right? Mm. In vivo, right? Right. You must have saved the serum, right? I mean, I saved everything. <laughs> yeah, right. Because uh, Right away, everybody wants to see the auto anybody, right? So this is the one week before the mice are uh, euthanized. So also, I uh, I analyze the uh, uh, B cells after euthanized. Mm. Uh, the expression reduced that because the cells, you know, mm. is a uh, is, uh, second cell. I analyze it maybe. Up to up to six six uh three to six hours. Yeah. yeah that, that's what I was running. So you treated just our eight forty eight, right? You know, just TLR seven, TLR seven eight signal agonist, and and then you waited how long? Uh, here data is uh, five five weeks. Oh, five weeks. Yeah. I mean you. Yeah. Treated once, or no? You treated many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I using low dose, uh, and uh, for many times the injection to mimic in you know, the chronic injection. The, so this is uh, PBMC, right? Uh, this is PBMC. Right. So the only only concern I have is that. Um, you are just making B cell to undergo class switch. So that down regulate, because uh, the problem I see here is that it's not a typical CD27 versus IgD. You have a good CD27 population. So really what we're seeing is the IgD down regulation. Yeah. So people might say, yeah, you, you just like, it might not be. Right, you're just causing, you know, naive to switch. Coming right, up. right. It, it's just a B cell class switch, not the real double negative B cell. So, have you major T bad CD11C in yeah, that? I'll, I'll mm. like, yeah, mm. you know, right. So that will that that will shut up, make them shut up. Otherwise, This is double near to your best on okay. I need to make the larger. Mm. Oh.
optimistic rally, should I make it? Mm. So, so CD21 is on the Y. Mm. And yeah, CD21 is the mm. X is a CD21. The Y is T beta. Mm. So this is uh, with the uh, PBS. Mm. So even with PBS, you know, we still can see uh, jump up in uh, BHD2. Okay. So These this, are all PBS? Yeah, this is PBS control. And also, I will show you. So, so, so even with the PBS control, you see more, a little more. Can you go back to that again? The BXC2 has a little more. Or no, not yeah. even a little more. What's the bottom one? Interferon receptor knockout. Right. So, so, uh, so. Yes, so the wild tie has more compared to the knockout and compared to the B6. So unfortunately, when I sacrifice my second analysis, uh, analyze I can, here I can see the difference between them because I guess is that the expression reduced. Oh yeah. Well, in, the, in the spleen, you don't see the difference. Oh, no, also PBMC. Oh. Spleen also. Hmm. Is this PBMC? I didn't, I didn't PBMC? finish the analysis PBMC after my the uh, I mean, so PBMCs seem like they have a little more. Uh, well, actually, it's CD twenty one. I was against CD CD twenty. 21 positive. What's the y axis? Is the y axis 20, 21? Y is T beta. You're right, T beta. Okay. So, um, and C21. So, you know, that's, so we're looking at that pot, that 21, T beta positive, 21 negative. And that looks more, in, like Wei Chin said, in the wild type, BXC2 wild type, mm -hmm. and even a little more than the interferon knock, receptor knockout. Which is good but, because yeah, I mean, so, interferon is in vivo is driving this, perhaps. Right. So I, I would say next time, Chiang mm -hmm. please maybe you if you could add a set of CD twenty three versus T bat because the CD twenty one expression in PBMC is just so low in the mouse. Basically, in the mouse, CD21 is the marginal zone B cell, so they don't circulate. So you, you will not see a really good expression of CD21 in the, in the PBMC. Yeah, but okay. as I remember, CD23, um, you do I see that. I don't remember spleen. I finished the analyzed spleen. Oh, yeah, that. right. Yeah. So what I'm saying, CD21 may not be a good marker for mouse. PBMC at least because what, that's, what is it? What is it? I, I would think that uh, yeah. So you didn't do a CD eleven C for mouse. I did. I did. You did. So how does it does it look uh, better? Because twenty one, I I know that they in PBMC you just don't see CD twenty one positive cell in mouse. Not not like human. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah. Mm. Uh, just like. Uh, here is the uh, here is the uh, with the uh, with the uh, collagen receptor I A for A. So yeah. It's pretty dramat dramatically increased the BHD2. Yeah, this is really know. strong. Yeah, but I reduced the by by knockout. Yeah. So this is after five weeks, right? Yeah, five weeks. Mm -hmm. That's really strong. Mm. Two times, two times, okay, two mm. times. So how many times you treat him once a week or how um, long? Uh, twice a one week. Oh, every two weeks, okay, so. Is that right? No, no. Twice. So you treated him twice. Twice okay. per week. Twice per week. Yeah. For how long? So here are total days. 10 times in Jashi. Right, right, 10 in Jashi, five weeks. Well, at any rate, it worked. Yeah, it was, it is good. So at the beginning, I worry about it on a walk.
And here is the city of NC mm -hmm. and the city 20, 21 item. So X is the city 21, Y is the city 11C. Mm -hmm. Here is PBS. Mm -hmm. No difference, I guess. No difference here. All right. So we can, but, but you said C eleven C is going to solve the problem. But, but C eleven C plus T bed is the best because C D twenty one PBMC and mouse generally is negative, so you won't see many of those cells. Yeah, I, I will uh, mm. to see a double them to it. Yeah. So sometimes you replace 20, 21 with 23. 23 does show up in the PBMC. And yeah, and some people use 23 as a marker for- oh, yeah, I don't know this. Mm. I just follow humans analysis. Yeah, yeah, I know. So here is a quite similar like uh, Tibet. I mm. also induced a uh, high expression in USDQ and uh, reduced by uh, mm. A deficiency of mm. better. Wait, so, wait, wait, where's T bet? Which one's T bet here? No T bet here. Is a uh, Y is a CD of N C, X is a uh, CD twenty one. Mm. Right. But you do have a set with T bet and CD eleven C. Wait, can I just can I just do it? So CD eleven C is Y, and I'm looking at the. It looks like it's upregulated, right? Yes. Right, CD eleven C yeah. is upregulated. And the BAC right. two, so right. preferentially, and right. less so, very much less so, in mm -hmm. the uh, in the knockout. The right, so it is in the type one interferon dependent. In a way, yeah. So that in the in vitro that didn't work, right? In vitro, we say CD eleven C was not stimulated by type one interferon, but here it does say it does. I, that's why I say maybe mm -hmm. need some other security. Right. Is a type one interferon. Yeah. Well, wait, wait. Can I just say, Robert? Wait a minute. This is different. CD eleven C is now upregulated by type one signaling. Uh, I mean. It's R, you're, you're giving them, right? You're giving them the R. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not, right. It which is, is bypassing, you know, right. type one interference signaling to some extent, but then probably, but then probably stimulating it and then causing, so you got two effects. Mm -hmm. You got direct stimulation of TLR7 seven, seven and 8 and indirect stimulation through type one interferon. Right. All right, or something like it, that. That's right. That so, is so right. Both, but if, if you get the knockout, then you don't get the, the indirect effect. You just get mm. the direct effect. Mm. And what I'm seeing here is this is all indirect, or a lot of it's indirect. Right. It's not TLR78 dependent. It's TLR78 induced type 1 interferon. Acts through type 1 interferon to stimulate T bed and right. then CD11C. Is that important? I mean, does that fit the model? Mm. But the critical thing, that's not, we, we want to see if IO4 can block this. That is the real question. Yeah, there are some, there are more challenges. Right. Because we don't know. But I mean, I think the you know, But I think the stimulation is too strong. I'll be surprised if IO4 inhibit this. I think here is a double CD and C and uh, Tibet. Let me, let me. So CD eleven C is Y axis, right? The X axis. Mm. So uh, X is a divider, Y mm. is even C. Mm. So double natural, I guess, no, uh, with PBS, no difference. Let me see here. No, wait, 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 go back, go back. I'm uh, just looking. I see, I see a population of TBAT positive, the CD11C negative. I don't know what that means, but you know, I see him sneaking out. That in summer, Tibet positive C, the, the last one. So Tibet is upregulated by itself without CD11C. I mean, I'm not sure what that means, but in the BXC2. 
right? To some extent, it's trying to be. Yeah, that's right. And, I don't know. And it's, you know, it's a marginal thing, but mm -hmm. compared to the control B6 mice. Right. Which is something. And then, oh, well, anyway. So it's it's a lot of data here. It's a good, right. it's good data. And, right. Uh, okay, so are you moving on? Let's move to uh, with the RA4A. I guess still I need a modification in this uh, platform kit. Uh, this conversation need a little bit uh, for why three minutes mm -hmm. down a little bit. Oh, wait, wait. So that previous thing was PBS? Yeah, yeah, previous is PBS. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's quite different. I see. So that was a spontaneous one, and now this. All right. So is X is what Tibet or CD11C? X is Tibet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it seems like Tibet has a better effect by type one interferon, because if you look at the CD11C negative, Tibet positive, even that's lower in the right. in the, yeah. the knockout. Keep yeah, you're right. All right. So, uh, and I think it's our, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Wait, can you say that again? So, Go yeah, ahead. so still Tibet is more affected by the interferon. Because in the Naka, you look at the, the, the x axis. So, just Tibet positive, CD11C negative. Just those, they're lower in the knockout compared to the wild type, but CD11C only positive. That's not that's not much difference between wild type and knockout. So still Tibet has more, uh, so in the barrel has more influence on Tibet than CD11C. Well, where, where do you say that? Where do you see that result? In, in the, in the x axis, just looking at Tibet positive, CD11C negative. Yeah. That you see wild Thai has a really good population of Tibet positive, 11C negative. And, but the wild Thai, uh, but the Nakao seems like they, they, that population is not, not as strong as the wild Thai. Oh, I don't know but, how you say that. Look at, look at the port pip point over. It's got a really strong, it's got a, no, it's just that one mouse, but otherwise, oh, but the, other one, yeah. the other mouse, no, no, the X, so it's just Tibet only. I'm, I'm seeing a pretty good Tibet population in the bottom ones. No, I don't Some think of so. Them. Yeah, so no. it's, it's Depends on which one you look at, but the three, yeah, four, this five. one, that's, uh, but otherwise, most of them is not as good as the wild time. I think we need to see the number. I would say at least two fold lower in the in the knockout than the wild type, but 11C only is not affected. All right, some well, mice even have more. 11C well, anyway, only. I guess the critical and, thing, the uh, right. BXC2 worked pretty well. Yeah, I yeah. agree, I agree, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just uh, regarding CD even C, maybe this wild type and knockout, if you do a status analysis, maybe no difference before, because no, I know. That's what I'm saying. 11C yeah, is that. not much affected. It yeah. is the Tibet more affected yeah. by type 1. So that's consistent with the with in vitro data then. Yeah. So, okay. This is PBMC. Five weeks. I will show data. Sublime. Yes, me. This is spleen. Yeah, this is when he just says that there are some reduce because you know the CS is standing up to up to at least that's six hours. Yeah. 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 What is, what is the trend that you say? Hmm. Yes. So, for
Can you see clearly? Yeah, we can yeah. see it well. So this is a spleen uh, from three different mouse strain uh, mm -hmm. with the injection of PBS. So the X is uh, the IgD, Y is the CD27 for double natural population. So from here, there is no difference, I think, between among these three groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a big, not, not a big. Wait, is this PBS? The PBS, yeah. Oh, okay. Could it be, you know, could, you know, in a PB, PBMC, we should before, you know, uh, PSD2 a little bit, uh, you know, higher than other two. But here in Spleen, you know, that could it be because of these cells, you know, delayed standing. Can I just mention one thing? Wait, Jin, remember you mentioned before mm -hmm. that if, if, you give a, if you give a dose five weeks, you know, you activate them, so there's not many IgD positive, something like that, you know, because they go to different. Yeah, ones. right. Look at all these IgD positive ones. They're all IgD positive. Yeah. So why, why is that? How does this fit with what you said before? What did I say? You know, that if you stim, you know, say so you're down regulated. I forget what it was. No, there's no anti meal stimulate. This is TLR stimulation. Yeah, you're not, a, you're not that strong. Possibly. This is a TLR only. I'm talking about anti IgM. The anti IgM, just that Ig, that that will, that that really masks your BCR binding by fax antibody. So when you see a negative, I so you you won't be able to detect double negative B cell. Anyway, I guess it's BBS treated. So we'll look at the other. Hmm. So, you know, but it's just interesting. You're all naive. I don't see a 20, CD27 population. This is a spleen. Okay. Yeah, so I, I thought that's, uh, yeah, I thought it's interesting that I see knockout has more CD27 positive cell compared to wild type. So that not, fits again. But not too many. Not too many. We need to see the actual dating and percentage. Yeah, I play in a uh, public travel and uh, mm. yeah, you're, you're right. Maybe but you know. tell me you did stand for germinal center, right? Because <laughs> here we I said we, we forgot about germinal center is a double negative B cell now. So did you do germinal center staining? I, I did uh, I haven't got a time to finish. Yeah, all right, that's you good. I'm not so you have done it, that's good enough. I'm yeah. not sure that maybe I need your help. Mm, yeah. So here is a with a we we with a uh call like a receptor seven, so it can show a difference at least uh, two times of three times, two times increase mm. compared with the knockout. And it's good. I guess it's a good. Yeah, it's good data. It definitely is good data. So the B6 get more with the with or without TLR. The B6 get more at all. So it's nine versus I guess something slightly, yeah. slightly should, only. I guess it should increase it just because of the way you get the I see. But it's okay for publication, I guess it's okay. Oh, it's pretty good. Okay, you went to need the previous B6 mm. game. I'm just seeing why only BXD2 has such a big effect. That's what I'm looking at. And uh, also maybe it's just because, you know, spleen is different from PVMC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, here is double natural, uh, double natural. I will show you double natural mm -hmm. too. The left is with the PBS injection. Mm. You, see here, you see, wow, five differences, right? Yeah, it's a big difference. Huge difference. 
Hmm. We didn't see the difference in Tamani two with PBS, but uh, you, if we see Tamani two, we see difference. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a huge difference. Yeah, huge difference. Right. This is PBS, right? Yeah, only PBS. Now, th this is in the spleen. Did we see this big difference in the uh, whales? Right. So in the I don't BHD, think we did. I don't think. Oh, go ahead. This is the spleen, right? So yeah, yeah. In, in the BHD two mouse, they always have a a more CD twenty seven. So they has a usually it's gating on marginal zone versus follicular B cell. The marginal zone marker is CD21 and follicular B cell marker is CD23. So BHD2 mice always have a big follicular B cell population. So 23 more and 21 marginal zone B cell is always a, a minor subset in the BHD2. Yeah, it's true. So, so they, this they, undergo, of, they undergo follicular translocation actually as a result of interferon. Right. <laughs> so right. you might expect that to be even lower. Right. I mean, you know, because they're really undergoing flicker cancer. Okay. Right. Yeah, we prepared the question in the city 21 uh, antibody, but I hear you see. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. Here is a with the uh, with two like receptor seven. What? Jump the. Hmm. Yeah. I think this is just they completely undergo in a way. This is because we, 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 John Wang, who's actually going to join us uh, in one hour, he show it clearly. If you give uh, CPG or poly IC or anything that stimulate type 1 in the barrel, the all the marginal zone B cell will get. Uh, a follicular localization, so they were all completely shoveled into the into the follicle, and but of course uh, we won't see a complete loss of CD twenty one like this. Uh, we never seen it like that. Maybe we didn't major it like this, but in a way that makes a lot of sense, especially after you have been repeated treated with re, with repeated dose of uh, TR seven. So all the B cell get stimulated was, uh, so Jason's sister published this. So they express undergo upregulation of CD69 and that leads to downregulation of B cell chemotaxis to S1P. So they will all get into the follicle and become germinal center B cell. That's what I used to think. So what I don't know is with this, they become double negative to B cell, that part I, I wasn't, so I didn't know about that. Well, see, this is important because, mm. you know, of course, we think mm. the two pathways and one pathway is the B and two pathway, which is extra flicker. Mm. And, the, and, the, and the, that's a typical memory. And then the other one is the flicker, which is typical memory. So this would be, we really need to see if they're germinal center versus not. Mm and autoantibody production and what kind, yeah. and even a spleen histo histologic section. But hopefully, right. I guess we don't care what it is, but you right. know. I, I think the, the question is, is, is extra follicular really extra follicular? Right, yes. Th that is the question. I don't, think is, I don't think there is such a thing. Nobody's ever seen it. Right, because it in human not. PBMC, they use the marker, the B cell signature, which for DN2, the FCRL3 positive, CRL5 positive, but CXCR4 negative, CXCR5 negative. So with that, they define this as extra follicular B cell. But in this case, I, I don't know the answer actually in the screen. Here's, something very, here's a very, right. interesting, here's a very interesting thing. In the knockout, the interferon receptor knockout. Since you know, mm -hmm. sis, Jason's sister showed, we showed mm -hmm. it, it, type one interferon, you know, upregulates mm -hmm. up CD69, downregulates S1P1, and then flicker translocation occurs. That requires into type one interferon signaling, which doesn't occur in the lower mm -hmm. ones because mm -hmm. they don't have type one interferon receptor. Mm -hmm. So maybe the lower ones are, are, are the true extra ones. Mm -hmm. 
that interferon receptor knockoff is really now going to be important, right? These TBET positive ones down there. I'm pointing to it, but you can't see it. You know what I mean? They could yeah. be extra flicker, and the right. ESC2 is a mixture. Right. So really, we don't know the answer. But, we, but maybe we, maybe that's a contribution to the bill because in the spleen, that may not be extra follicular. Maybe they're really follicular. Yeah, but in PB, but the, so that's why the single cell will be important if they really express everything as extra follicular. But when you really look at the follicle, it is not extra follicular, it is follicular. And finally, they still form the antibodies through the germinal center response. Then you have to redefine what these D and two B cells are. They're not extra follicular. They are still yeah. follicular, but maybe it's a type one dependent follicular B cell. So it's a subcategory, and it's still finally they still undergo a germinal center response to make antibody, which I would think that makes a lot more sense. So there still is a germinal center follicular B cell response, but it's just that they don't express the, but in the once they come out of the follicle, circulate in the blood, they lose the germinal center chemotaxis signature. So it looks like they are extra follicular, but really they are follicular. It's, what it do is, you say they lose? They lose CXCR4 and 5 yeah. when they come out of the and come out of the circulation. I mean that down regulation CXCR4 and 5. Right. Is what people say, okay, they can't be in the follicle, right? Right. I mean, you know, it's just kind of like they never can see them, but right. The yeah. down regulation of CXCR5 and 4 mm. are, are characteristic of DN, D and B cells or D and 2, right? Mm, right. Right, because you got those on your. Mm. Anyway, we can measure those genes. Right, that's right. And that's why we, we did the single cell analysis. Mm -hmm. um, we might have to do parallel spleen versus PBMC because uh, nobody can do it. In human, no way they can do it. Only in mouse, we can do it and say, this is what's happening in the spleen. And that's what happening in PVNC in the same mouse at the same time. So that's nobody a, that's can a, do it. That's yeah. a really good, that's a really good thought. Mm. Because did you get, I mean, that's an extremely good thought because that will come up later. If we find it in the spleen, we find that, okay, there is no such X picker. They say, well, you know, but in humans, we don't know because you made your purple blood in humans and you made your spleen in mice. So she said, do both, which I yeah. think is very important. So the so you don't have that complaint that you know you're measuring a different population. Right. That's, I think that's that's probably key to this whole thing. Right. You come back later, you show the spleen, and then you come back later, kabam, this is this is purple blood, and you still see it. Mm. Or, or not, I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe purple yeah. blood is different. Right. So overall, I like all the data today. There's none I don't like. Yeah, this is very good. Now, is it gonna take five weeks to do this? Because to do a single cell experiment, you have to treat these mice for five weeks. You know, it, how are we gonna do a single cell experiment in vivo like this? Do you have a plan for that, Cheng Ming? So, yeah, or, or is it five weeks too late? Because we don't want to, this is the outcome. This is not so what's happening during this. Uh, and also, yeah, so in vivo, that's the challenge. What would be the time point after your injection? Uh, yeah, we need uh, maybe two weeks, I think. Uh, one week, two week, you can do it like this. Mm. I, I guess maybe uh, in a, I, 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 let me say this: maybe three injection and another mm. three injection, and to see what's happening. And you also need the non-injected control, right? For sure. So it's a yep. six group now, and six group. We need at least three mice each. Yeah, we need to have. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. So we need to plan well. And I would say, even if this is the plan, I would say, I don't mind that we, we don't collect COVID-19 sample, which is all devoted for this experiment. But did, I, I was thinking something else. Did you say about five weeks or what? Does it take five weeks to make get the mice ready? Is that right? Uh, yeah, five weeks, six weeks, so I guess it's okay. So that's why I say maybe a three injection. Maybe we can see the difference. A six injection, I guess definitely we can see. So you so did you're do saying like a six index, so, and that sounds like that'll be three weeks. Right. So did so you do in better. between? So the PBMC today or the spleen? That's fine. Did you do in between a PBMC analysis? Let's say around three weeks, two weeks, or three weeks. You you happen. You happen to do a uh, yeah. Do 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 I guess it's no problem. Uh, if we want to do like this, oh, I can get uh, you know, I just uh, you know, delete some, delete some you know, from the different mouse and the analysis and to see. No, I'm just talking about this batch. So this is five week, but uh, did you do a uh, two it's weeks? Crazy. You did a PBMC for these mice and saw the difference. Say that again, I'm sorry. Did you happen to run the two weeks analysis? And that week two, week two after the injection, did you do a PBMC? Oh, I didn't do that because, you, you know. Yeah, all right, so. Continuing to uh, collect blood from mice, it's, it's uh, pretty dangerous. Sometimes, you know, mice were die and also. Hmm. So you mean you collected blood? So can we, yeah, so could we look at the ELISA? At least that could give us some hint. Yeah, we will do that. And that's why, you know, I clear everything, to be honest. Yeah, so maybe we look at the ELISA and get some hint so we can say, all right, maybe three weeks, we see some difference. Well, wait a minute, did you say you- Oh, three weeks, I didn't collect blood. Oh, you didn't? I no, see. I cannot collect because, you know, mm -hmm. you know, for whole experiment, I only can do it two times. The one time is before I use an eye, use an ionization. Because you know, you if your blood too many times, sometimes you know I, I'm I'm No, I know. I, I'm only saying once. Did you ever yeah. do a in what just one time point before you you did this? Uh, did you, let's say around two weeks or around three in weeks? In between. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah I don't first. expect you to do every week, just one time point in between. Right. Do we have to treat the mice for five weeks and then say myself? Or can we do it oh, no, 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 no. So maybe uh, maybe two weeks or three weeks is, is okay, I think. Hmm. Two weeks or four weeks. Five weeks is very, very strong. You can see difference, right? Hmm. Yes, maybe. Yeah. If, so, okay, here is the city university. I guess it's just similar. I just wanted to clear. It's similar like Tibetan. Yeah. And it is the mm. average, I guess, two times increase mm. or three times increase. So this yeah, I, I, I'm still thinking without IL-4, although the data looks absolutely great, but without IL-4, I have a little bit concern because they might say, all right, of course you stimulate with TR7 that promotes the type 1 interferon pathway. So you see the knockout doesn't have such a great effect. They sort of will anticipate that. I will see the power of IL-4. Yeah, so the real, I think the novelty is still the IL-4 can inhibit that. That is still the, the biggest novelty compared need, to, uh, yeah. In practice, both things I need to, you know, make sure a very common yeah. even injection. And also, you know, IV injection. And yeah. also the, to check. So using just the one or two months or three months, Mm. See, after your iPhone injection, is there some mm. type of change? Yeah. Like, what? 
what, what did you say the some what after one or two injections? So I want to use in I4. Yeah. IV injection. And after I4 injection, maybe two times, three times injection. And yeah. check the, the phenotype, you can see some difference. And this uh, it need to show some difference, right? Mm. So if, if we show some difference, okay, we just say, you know, you know you can the, the, the mouse number and do great experiment. Yeah, so basically, Chang is saying with IL-4, he needs some preliminary and also more practice because it's an IV. So I think, so you're going to use the antivirus or use the IL-4 antibody strategy? Uh, using IL-4. Antibody, anti-IL-4. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have that? Yeah, I, uh, I have some in the lab. Does it work? I don't know. That's why I need it. Yeah, nobody knows because that antibody has, I think it's a, wait a minute. We want to induce IL-4, right? I mean, you could do it. Yeah, in I know. Right. It, I mean, it's a strange thing. The anti, and IL-4 bound anti-IL-4. And that's right. better than IL-4 because it lasts longer. But right. you know, just, uh, you know, it sounds like, you know, like you got IL-4 bound to an antibody. Does that in fact really stimulate IL-4 receptor? You could do right. it in vitro though and, mm -hmm. and see that. It's a strange, it's a strange thing. You can't right. give IL-4. Yeah, so maybe stepwise, agree. Let's do it stepwise. First, uh, get this to work, get some good data. I mean, and then practice the IL-4. Uh, same time, and then, uh, yeah, of course, single cell can do it not the same time. It's another batch. The loss of data. Hmm. But here's the thing to, in order to get the, keep, keep it moving, so forth, uh, you know, we, we agree that the spleen looks good hmm. uh, with our, our, I guess, it's R48, chronic R484. Mm. And there's some value to the knockout. Mm. Can we just get that experiment into the single cell? Mm. Do that, you know, and, and then show that flicker versus extra flicker, you know, because that, that's a question right there. Right? Why don't we mm. do that? Mm. Yeah. Show that, show that really there's no extra flicker. There's extra flicker like somehow, yeah. you know, right. but they're really all in the follicle. Right, right. Or maybe not. I don't know. But nobody's ever demonstrated that. And I, and I it's irritating. Well, I've seen some confocal. They show T bed is extra follicular, but uh, of course uh, we don't know. Especially yeah, you had a, this, you, but right. it's all over the place, right? It's a rig map. Yeah, I don't. I know. remember this came up 15 years ago. You know, Schlamchek's paper, extra flicker. Mm -hmm. They show an LPR. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, it's always rigged. It's always contrived. Right. You know, people just repeat and repeat. Right. And repeat. Right. In this case, I because we know we saw the follicle that Jiang Wang actually did the confocal. Really, there's right. nothing extra follicular. Right. Everything is in the follicle. It's just the so, notion that it has to be it has to be eliminated. Right. It's like microbiota causes all diseases. <laughs> You know, they right. have to go one by one and right. get rid of all the all these ridiculous ideas that people get. Right. Yeah, I can do something. Yeah, there probably are some extraplicator, but it's not all that. Right. Those are not extraplicator. They spend. And the, the funny whole thing time. is, the extra follicular. Then they use see the IL twenty one. So IL twenty one is follicular. Huh? Right. Oh, yeah, that's exactly. And mm -hmm. where do you think the T cells are doing? Where do you think those? Right. TAT cells are coming from. Right. TFH is, I mean, TFH by definition, they're flick. <laughs> right, that's right. So it's very confusing. Yeah, they don't, the people just don't think or something. Right. People meaning the, everybody else in the world. Mm. But this, people know this mm. somehow don't put two and two together. Mm. Oh, well, anyway, let's do it. Let's, let's go, let's go. Let's do this. Let's get this. <laughs> Solve this problem one at a time. Mm. Then we can do the IL4 problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And lastly, about the uh, uh, spinning weight. Also, I count the cell number. Mm. 
or uh, I haven't finished the analysis. So here you just need, you know, after the after you know uh, prolonged receptor injection, the spleen be, uh, you know become you know bigger, bigger, you know, especially for this uh, BFD tumor. Mm. Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. This is the PBS. I like the PBS. The writer is the, uh, mm. oh, I had something wrong. Oh, sorry. This is not, the writer is RA4. No, we understand. It, the labeling is wrong, but. Uh... Well, that's, that's pretty good. Mm. I guess. I mean, I guess, because there's yeah. a lot of germinal centers. I think. Right. Yeah. There's, there's an, it's not extracollicular. Right. So I think uh, I, I need to go through the Pax protocol because there's the staining protocol to look at B cell subset, not just the DN2. We need to do that for sure. So the B cell, I think maybe Chami has it. But at least let me send this paper to you. So we, we, we should analyze every single subset in, in, the, in the spleen, not just the follicular versus extra follicular or DN2, so memory. So there's the classical mouse B cell staining set that people anticipate to see, not just the, because the, the one you did, that's the human B cell staining protocol, not the mouse. So we, we definitely want to include the, the mouse B cell subset staining set. So what, uh, how many sub, 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 subsets do you want to include? Um, definitely the, so I was seeing in the paper, they, they do a, a one set for, um, for example, follicular B cell, marginal zone B cell, and then uh, maybe transitional. Then of course you, you need to do the germinal center because that's what people are used to see. Because actually we submit a paper for the germ-free mice. We also look at the double negative B cell. Because the reviewers say, but we don't understand this. Nobody did this for mouse. So can you, can you include a reference? Somebody did this with mouse. So in fact, it confused them. They think this is the human staining set. For mouse, there's the mouse staining set. Why you use this human set for mouse? But in our hand works so well, but it's just the human mouse B cell definitions are different. So since we're doing mouse, we need to have mouse staining, the classical mouse staining set people can recognize for mouse people. Yeah, but I'll send you the mouse staining set and the paper talked about mouse B cell subset. But for, for this paper, we cannot include mm -hmm. too much other uh, subsets, right? We need to narrow it down. No, but when you're doing the mouse, if you don't use the, the typical mouse standing set, the reviewer is going to complain. Uh, so you, you definitely, by all means, you need to have the mouse standing set. Otherwise, they, uh, well, anyway, let me send you the paper and the mouse standing set, it, maximal two more sets. Uh, yeah, uh, we may, uh, maybe I can. Uh, Right, but like I said, if the experiment's so big, I think if we plan ahead, we inform everybody and then we tell the COVID-19 uh, coordinator, say this week we have a big experiment, so we cannot take sample this week. Perhaps we have to do it like that. Jamie, I'm just wondering about another thing. Okay, I don't want to rush things, but you got before cut and after cut. Like, so you cut some of the spleen and I guess you weighed it before. Is that what that is? And after? Uh, yes. Okay. So the before weight is probably a good weight. Now I'm looking at the last two, the females who got 48, they got pretty big spleens. Now I'm looking at the males. There's a male up here. She, he has a pretty big spleen. I'm looking, I'm looking in the middle thing. Oh, that's a receptor knockout. Oh, I should look up here. So 
the males, I'm just wondering if the female male difference, you know. So it's not obvious. Maybe the male's a little smaller. BXC2, I'm look, scanning the male's about 200. Uh, no, that's PBS. Or, oh, no, the male, that's, no, that's a female, 600, 600. Uh, here's two males, 500, 400. Females is, oh, there's a 900 with that female. I guess the females might be more, a little bigger than the males, but I mean, it's not, you know, the males get splenomegaly too. You got to mix your males and females and, you know, so, but they both have an effect. If you put the dots in, it will be, it will be uh, a spread. Probably the males will be a little lower than the females. But in any event, I, it, it, the effect is there. That's all. I just try to understand the data. They're all five months old. That's good. Everything looks, everything looks well controlled. I mean, and it's, you mostly have males because that's what we have. The knockout looks like there's more males than the BXC2. A little bit. I only see two feet, no, maybe three females in that group. Unfortunately, we have so many, we don't have any, if, if it's the same sex or not the same sex. That's all. I, I'll just think of it, you know, that's, but just go on with what you're saying. Yeah, that's all. Next, I need to finish the lesson. So, and to see. So first of all, we need to get uh, some uh, conclusive uh, decision after Elasa. So if I show Elasa is uh, also promising and our energy increased. Now you saved the spleen. Did you, uh, hopefully you saved some for, uh, OCT, right? For frozen section? Yeah, I, I did. I, 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 I you know, cut uh, part, uh, you know, part of them for OTC, part, part of them for paraffin in bed. Oh, so okay. There's a lot of work to do. So, but I, no, need I know. OCT, and, you know, it, I think David Pond is here, but, you know, and actually Fatima is here. But in any event, the point is, is we want to gear up the immunofluorescent staining. We, I love the, those pretty pictures we get. And, uh, so we so one thing, Chengming, we have finally arranged to get sections cut. So you don't have to worry about that, you know, right, which OCT? I think so, yeah. We know, we know how to do that. And and even the even the paraffin, you know, so you probably in fact you we should do the paraffin. Are they in formula now or how are they fixed in paraffin? Are they they're still in formula or what happened to those things? So spleen formalin, then yeah. So overnight and then seventy percent alcohol, then uh, you could uh, submit it for the cassette and bedding. Right. No, I know bedding would do it. But what I'm asking Cheng Ming is, what what are the what are they now? What are they still on formalin? Because no one leave me too long. Did you transfer them to ethanol? No, basically, basically I haven't cut time to do that. But I have, for just several days, it's okay. Based on my experience. So, so I, it's still in formula. Seventy percent ethanol, you know. Oh no, that's fine. Seventy percent ethanol for, for several days is fine. Yeah. So they took it out of formula, and you got it in the ethanol. Sometimes people forget and just leave it in the formula. So you got it out of the formula, and you put it in ethanol, and that's is that right? The cassettes are there. Right. That's right. And we can take them to Betty and get them get those fixed. She's she's got a system over there, and so you at least have that. And for the other ones, the OCT is nicely wrapped in foil in the freezer, I guess. Is that right? right. In the I, freezer I, till you, we decided that this, these are the staining we would do. So. Yeah, kind of staining we need to do. Right, so we, we want to do the staining because we're good at that. But, you know, there's a lot of stains here and you probably don't need to do them all. I and mean, it'd be pretty hard. So I have to pick out some. Maybe a couple of females and a couple of males. Uh, so, so tell me, you say you got the germinal center flow cytometry staining set. Uh, yes. Uh, so yeah, so we, we look at it, then uh, we can decide which are the best uh, informative yeah, I, one. Yeah, I used to use the. Uh, right. So that's good. 
So we can look at those and then we, we can pick up. So yeah, so that's good. If you could deposit those data in the shared drive for me with the protocol. Right, so, I right, right, so I will look at them. All right, I think that's very good. Right, because we want to side by side compare the one with the highest extra follicular versus are they the one really extra follicular or they also have the highest germinal center? The other really good thing, Ching Ning, is you got a lot of mice. You know, this is always something that people don't forget to do is they don't do enough mice. But you got plenty of mice in this experiment. That's, that's really, really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No sight, no sight. <laughs> <laughs> right. After sharing this good data, sight. No, it's okay. We'll we can we'll kind of direct it. We'll help you. Now we see what you what help you need. We can we can provide help of of all kinds, like sectioning and staining, or analysis, further analysis of germinal centers, or planning for the single cell. In fact, we got to do them all at once, really. But the single cell, and you know that that involves how much to treat, how long, we, you know. But you know, and then you got to pick mice out for that. But I think, I think we can. I think we're on the final approach now. Right. So I, I could tell you the the COVID nineteen has soaked up everybody's time, and I think it, it's been a month now. But uh, gradually things have been worked out. And I think uh, right now we ask Betty only give a sample two, two days a week. I personally don't want more than two days a week because if you had three days, nobody else can do anything else. Yeah. But obviously there are tons of other things to do. So I, I would, and I hope everybody agree that only two days a week, that's the maximum. So everybody, and then then the thing is that David has been running fast, learning how to run fast, but right now I don't want him to spend so much time running fast because I, in fact, once you set up the compensation, everything, the whole week, to, the, the sample takes one hour. You can get everything done. So I think gradually things will be streamlined. So two days, perhaps nobody has time, but, uh, but then otherwise mm -hmm. the leftover three days, perhaps they will have a lot of more time. So gradually we'll work out how to best help you. So yes. that for and as far as running the pants goes, I think I, I wouldn't mind just paying, you know, to get assisted, assisted, assisted uh, analysis every time. I mean, it's only $15 an hour or more. So you just tell, just give the samples to, uh, you know, if you trust in Sagar, I'm sure you do, or Brincia, and tell them, look, this is the same one. I don't have time to run it. Just do a good job and give me the results in about an hour or whatever. That'll save time. We're interested in, we're more interested in the results and saving time and, and less in money, of course, right. we're money, but we but, gotta but get. I would done. say before everybody help you with this big experiment, I would hope one day you take an unimportant mouse here or two, just train everyone so they will do everything the way you do it. Make sure everybody's doing a good job the staining, the dissection of the spleen, or to get the single cell out of the spleen. Everything will be so good. Meets the standard you want. So only when everybody's so good that we see the data, the data they generated is just like yours, then we feel comfortable, right? So when you sacrifice the real mice with 20 mice that everybody help you and we will get good data for you. So perhaps we next week we set up one day that uh, everybody work with you so that it make sure that the result generated by them is, is the same as yours. How about that? Yeah, we need to think about it. Uh, right, so until we, we let everybody kind of work with you, otherwise, I even I want them to, I don't feel comfortable to be honest with you because who knows, right? So uh, you need to train <coughs> them so that everybody 
don't mean they don't know it, but it's just that everybody has a different way. Make sure the reagent, the way you do it is consistent throughout. So everybody's doing the same protocol, same thing. So yeah, so I would say next week or the week after, we, we have some non so critical mouse, you bring them over and we set a day. So we make sure that it, it's, uh, it will have no conflict with the COVID-19 sample coming. And then once they get trained, then uh, we, we feel very comfortable. So- well, You know, one thing is, you know, Cheng Ming, as you remember, uh, when David first came, I think it was January, I forget. Anyway, you, you me and David got together and we did his mouse. I just did him. I said, I just want to stain the mouse. So I killed the mouse and we stained it. You're right. Remember that? And we did, and it worked out okay. Now, the thing is, is I wrote down everything, every single step I did. Because I that's the way I do it. It's about, I got three pages or so. I can send everybody that, but I but we did. It, I, you know, you did it, Cheng Ming. So you and I did it together. You said, here's the way you do it, so forth. So anyway. We, we, everybody, we, I know exactly what to do because yeah, we did it together. And David knows, but he might have forgotten because he only did it once. But I wrote down the protocol. I've got your notes on my desk, actually. Oh, it's pretty messy, but you know, because I write in the margins and I make little notes. But it, everything we did, I remember up to counting, we had, a, we had an argument on how to, what the multiplication factor is. But that's because I was using a little square, a little, little square versus a little square. Any event, you know. So then we got that out of the way and we got the right number because I knew the count was, anyway. And then, and then the staining and, you know, that stuff, sediment, all that. It's every little step is there written down somewhere. I can clean it up a little bit. So it's not like we don't know what to do. David even knows what to do. I mean, we did it. We did, we did this already. But you're suggesting I already did with Cheng Ming and David. Mm -hmm. and, and then we say everybody, it just now includes Kevin. Well, maybe I think Kevin, perhaps Shen Ren and uh, Joe, everybody, me, we all involved. So make sure it, it, the data really comes out or everybody's hand looks consistent throughout. So. Right. And, and this will come up during this sacrifice for the single cell. Right, and of course, and Fatima, the, even though Fatima may not do mouse experiment, the more you, you interact with lab members, see how we do things, as gradually you pick up the, the way you do experiment. So I would even encourage Fatimas to uh, come to the lab more often to work with people in the lab. Well, that's very good. So uh, now, now most people are here. Let me say it again. So we discussed the lab meeting schedule with everybody. Uh, 